Hello, in this video I'm going to solve the following problem for you, a problem on classical mechanics. A particle of mass m can move on a rough horizontal table and is attached to a fixed point on the table by a light inextensible string of length b. The resistance force exerted on the particle is minus m k v, where v is the velocity of the particle. Initially, the string is taut and the particle is projected horizontally at right angles to the string with the speed u. Find the angle turned through by the string before the particle comes to rest. Find also the tension of the string at time t. That would be a good idea if you pause the video at this point and give it a try yourself. If you do the calculations correctly, the answers that you get for this problem are the angle turned by the string is equal to u over kb, the tension in the string at time t equals to mu squared over b times e to the power of minus 2 times k times t. Okay, so now let us solve the problem. Uh, let us assume that this is the top view, this is this rectangle is my table, and then this is my string of length b. I fix one uh, end of it to the point O of the table, and the other one is attached to the mass m. Initially, I give it a jerk so that the initial velocity makes the right angle with the radius with the string itself and the magnitude of that is supposed to be u. Okay, according to this setup of course you know that this particle because I'm assuming that the string is always stretched and taut so it means that it will traverse a, cir a circle. So it's a circular motion in two dimensions but it is not uniformly uh, it's not a uniform circular motion because of existence of the resistance force. So the speed will change. Okay, so we know that I have to use Newton's second law to solve the problem. But the first thing is to set up a coordinate system which fits the problem and makes the calculation simpler. Because it's a 2D dimension, it's a 2D circular motion, I hope that you agree with me the best uh, coordinate system that we can use is the 2D polar coordinates. Okay, so uh, let us say that this is the initial configuration of the system and after time t, for example, then the particle will be here and this angle covered is theta. So theta is a function of time. And then uh, let me take this direction as a standard or hat direction for the polar system, coordinate system, and this one to be theta hat. This is in the direction that points towards the increasing theta, and that's the direction of pointing in the increasing uh, distance to the origin. Okay, we need to solve two, uh, we, ha we have to answer two questions here. So, uh, I want to know that after I uh, push it with this uh, speed, then it will start moving because of the friction force. It will eventually stop. Of course, I will give a little bit of comment on that, as you will see later. And then I want to know that how much angle is traversed, is covered by the particle when it comes to a halt. And then we also want to answer what is the magnitude of the tension as a function of time, because of course the direction is always pointing towards O. These are the questions that we want to answer. Okay, uh, let me write the general formulas for velocity and acceleration in the polar coordinate system in two dimensions. Okay, so V is R dot R hat plus R theta dot theta hat, and then the acceleration is r double dot minus r theta dot squared r hat, and then plus uh, r 
theta double dot plus two r dot theta dot theta. But of course, this problem is much simpler than these formulas uh, because r in this problem is constant. So this means that r dot and r double dot, both of them are zero. And I can put this back into these equations. So let me do them case by case. So v becomes equal to r dot is zero, but r is b, so it becomes b theta dot theta hat. But what happens for a? a, this one is zero, this one is b, so it becomes minus b theta dot squared plus, oh, sorry, r hat plus, here this becomes b theta double dot, but this term becomes zero. Okay, so these formulas are now simpler. If I ask you what is b theta dot, you will answer me this is just the speed, because this is the magnitude of the velocity. Why magnitude? Because theta dot in this setup, theta is increasing over time. So theta is an increasing function of time. So its derivative is positive and b is also a constant positive. So this is a positive. So this uh, b dot is nothing except the norm of the velocity, which is a speed and I just simply show it with v, okay? So if I ask you what v is, v, the speed, is b theta dot. This is the v. Okay, so in, the velocity vector can be written as a speed times theta hat, of course. But then let me also write the acceleration in terms of a speed somehow. This is simple, because if I take one derivative with respect to time, this becomes v dot, b is constant, this becomes theta double dot. So p, b theta double dot can be, replaced with, uh, can be replaced with v dot. Okay? But what about this term? This term also simple. So you see that from here, theta dot is just v over b. So theta dot squared becomes v squared over b squared. So I multiply it by minus b, it becomes minus v squared over b. So then acceleration becomes minus v squared over b, r hat, and then v dot theta hat. Yes? Very simple. But now I want to use Newton's second law. For Newton's second law, I need to know the total force. There are four forces involved in this problem. One of them is due to gravity, that's the weight of my particle. The other one is the normal reaction coming from the table. But because I am assuming that the particle remains on the table all the time, so these two forces cancel out, and they actually, in principle, they don't appear in the total force. They are cancelled out. There are two more forces acting on my particle. One of them, according to the problem, is uh, the resistance force, which is given by this formula. So let me change my color here. Minus m k, the velocity. Yes. But the velocity is also up there. So I can write it as minus m k. Instead of velocity, I write a speed multiplied by theta hat. Okay, so that is the force that comes here. Minus m k speed theta hat. But the, another one is, of course, this uh, tension, the uh, tension force. But the tension force is always opposite to our hat. So let me assume that uh, let me assume that this t uh, is the magnitude of this. So in principle, I should write it as t bar, the vector t, and let me assume that t is the norm of this vector. But because it is acting opposite to r, if I want to bring it in here as vector, I would write minus t r hat. So t is the magnitude of the tension that I am looking for to find it. Okay, so Newton's second law will tell me that m times acceleration 
is equal to F total. Okay, so I multiply A by M, so it becomes minus M V squared B R hat plus M V dot theta hat. And F total is this expression. So if you don't mind, let me write this one first. Okay, and this one second. Uh, v vector bar. Okay, two vectors are equal, so this means that they have to be equal component wise. So the component of R hat from the left hand side should match with the R, com uh, R hat component from the right side. Yes? And if you don't mind, let me take this minus sign out and let me keep this for future that I want to calculate t. Okay, but then this one in v dot, which is the theta hat component, should match with the theta hat component on the right hand side. Sorry, we don't need this theta hat. Uh, then of course this and that are cancelled, so I get this differential equation, which is extremely uh, simple and standard differential equation. Some of us we actually remember the uh, solution, but if you don't, we can of course solve it. So let me assume that you don't remember the answer, but let me solve it. Okay, so let me bring it here. So V dot is equal to minus K V, but V dot means the derivative with respect to time equals to minus K V. And this is a separate differential equation. So let me bring V down, and then let me take DT there. Of course, if you have a course, if you had already a course in differential equation, you know that this symbolic calculations is valid, okay? So then I integrate both sides. The left-hand side becomes LN of absolute value of V. The right-hand side becomes minus K times T. I'm differentiating I'm integrating both sides, and then of course plus a constant of integration. But I really do not need absolute value here, because V in this problem, if you remember, was the magnitude of the speed, so it is always positive, so I don't need absolute value. I can just replace it with pairs of brackets. And now I have to uh, find this C. How? I know that when T is zero, the speed to the uh, v is u, because it was mentioned that initially the speed of the particle is u. So if I replace t with 0, I have to replace with uh, v with u. So it becomes ln of u equals to the constant c. And I put that constant there. So ln of v equals to minus kt plus ln of u. I move this to the left. And ln of v minus ln of u can be written as ln of v over u equals to minus k times t. Then v over u becomes exponential of this factor. And then I'm looking for v. So v becomes equal to u e to the power of minus k t. So this is the formula that gives me the speed of my particle as a function of time. Uh, okay, but my goal is to see when the particle comes to a halt, and that was the uh, point that I told you that I have to give a comment. So it means that how much I have to wait so that the particle comes to a rest? Never, yes? Because if I am looking for a t, so that v of t becomes zero. But you know that this is impossible because this means that u e to the power of minus kt is zero. Exponential cannot be zero. u is not zero. So this product in principle cannot be zero. So I have to wait infinitely long time because if t goes to infinity, this can happen because k is a positive constant, it is negative. So I have to wait infinitely long seconds, infinitely many seconds, yes? Okay, so in principle, uh, if I want to solve this equation, 
just symbolically t is infinity. Okay. But the problem is that I want to answer how much angle is covered by the particle before particle comes to a rest. Okay, so I need a formula that expresses theta as a function of time. This is what. But that is simple. Why? Uh, because if you go back where? Here. V is B theta dot. So theta dot is just V over B. And V is this expression. So theta dot is V over B. V is this expression. If I divide it by B, it becomes this. And now I'm looking for theta, so I have to integrate both sides with respect to time. This simply becomes theta. This is just a constant. Yes? But you know that if I want to integrate this, a factor of minus 1 over k goes down, so it becomes minus. This becomes kb. The function repeats itself in this integration, but of course I will have a constant of integration, a new constant of integration. But this is also simple to find. Why? Because I told you that I started from this setup, so this means that in this setup, if the time is zero, initially theta is zero. Okay, so I go back to my equation, I replace t with zero and theta with zero. So this becomes 0 equals to minus u over k b. This becomes 1 plus a. And then I immediately find that a is equal to what? a is equal to u over k b. And I put it back here. So finally, theta as a function of time is now clear. Yes? You see, a is u over k b. And then I have also a u over kb with negative sign here. If I factor it out, so it becomes u over kb, 1 minus e to the power of minus kt. So this is the, this gives me how much theta, how much angle is covered by my particle if time is t. But I want to answer how much angle is covered when the particle stops. The particle stops only when t is infinity. So in other words, if I want to answer that, t covered, theta covered, is equal to the limit of theta, t, theta of t when t goes to infinity. And the formula you see, if t goes to infinity, this vanishes, and then I am left with this, that is supposed to be answer done. This is done. Okay? This is the first part of the problem. The second part is asking you about uh, the magnitude of the tension as the function of time. And of course, this formula that I reserved here will solve the problem, yes? Because t is a function of v, the speed, and I got it here. And the speed as a function of time is given here. So what I need to do, I need to take it and put it in that formula. So what happens? T becomes equal to m over b and then v squared. So I square this one. I square this one, it becomes u squared. Squaring this one, the exponent will be multiplied by 2. Okay? And this is the tension. I can write it as a function of time. Okay, I have recently uh, uh, got to know this book, but when I solved the problems in the book, I myself enjoyed them. They are not too hard, they are not too simple, they have some points on it. Okay, so I don't know how you think, that would be great if you leave a comment, that's so that I can know your uh, opinion about these problems. I hope that you also enjoyed solving the problem as I did. Until the next video, be safe and goodbye. Thank you.